Leonard Susskind, uh, what was it like to get into essentially a, a pretty big cosmological argument with Stephen Hawking? And be careful, because Hawking's one of my wheelchair boys. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we're really tight. We're really tight. <laughs> it wasn't that physical. What was it like? It was fun and it was frustrating. It was incredibly frustrating. Um, Stephen had a view which was very, very difficult <coughs> to argue with. His ideas were based on very, very sensible ideas. A black hole is a place where nothing can get out of, but things can fall into it. And if things can fall into it and they can't get out, they're gone. But then the black hole evaporates. Stephen had proven that beyond anybody's uh, doubt. And so things fall into the black hole. They can't get out. The black hole evaporates. Poof, it's gone, just exactly as, uh, as Brian said. Um, it, it was unassailable. There was no way to argue the case. And yet, some of us, particularly Harad and myself, very, very strongly felt that this really undermined everything that we knew about physics. Everything that we know about physics today, and even much earlier, was based on a principle of physics which is so basic that we sometimes forget to mention it to our students. It's the idea that information never disappears. And I'll tell you what that means. Information means distinctions, distinctions between things. Um, a hydrogen atom is not, uh, is not a uh, oxygen atom. An oxygen atom is not a hydrogen atom. There are distinctions between these things. And it was a very, very basic principle of physics that distinctions never disappear, that they may get scrambled, that they may get all mixed up. But if you start with one configuration and you let it go, or you start with a different configuration which has different information and you let it go, they'll stay different. And Stephen was saying exactly the opposite. No matter what you throw into the black hole, in the end you get out exactly the same thing. It was extremely difficult to see what was wrong with what he was saying. It was even harder to make him understand that there had to be something wrong with what he was saying, so it was very, very frustrating. But at the same time, um, it was very exhilarating to, uh, to come up against this basic problem of conflict of principles. And if anything can break the impasses in physics, if there are no experiments available, it's conflicts of principle. When conflicts of principle arise, that's when major new paradigms can shift. And that's the excitement. That's really the excitement. Harold, so, explain to me why um, this problem with Hawking, this, um, uh, you know, the information can't go away as it seems as though Hawking's mathematics suggests it does, is different from something like, say, conservation of mass energy, where matter can neither be created nor destroyed. It's, it's different than that, right? Yes. <clears throat> it was a very fundamental problem. And the way I always saw it is Hawking was using quantum mechanics, in particular quantized fields, to derive his result. So quantum mechanics went in as, as starting point number one, and then general relativity and everything else, and they used all that to derive the black holes, radiate particles. From that, it was derived that there was information, and there was information disappearing. Well, the fact that information disappears is at odds with quantum theory itself. So he uses quantum theory to derive a result which basically was at odds with quantum theory. So there had to be a mistake somewhere. I shouldn't call it a mistake because what he did was it by itself mathematically correct and nobody doubts that. But the final result had something in it that couldn't be true. And so this is what in physics we call a paradox. And like my friend Lenny has been saying, as soon as you encounter a situation of this sort in the physical world, we are very happy, actually. It is a paradox. It means there's work for us to do. We have to clear this thing up. And if you look at the past, you know quite well that when people start to clear up paradoxes, new discoveries are being right. made. So you guys are seen friends. several cases, and that's why we're all so excited about this thing. There's something wrong. The derivation itself seems to be flawless, but there's something wrong anyhow with the result. You guys are friends, then? Of course we are. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, yeah. Herman, let me, let me ask you a question just about this issue yeah, of information, I and then I want you to go back. Uh, I uh, definitely want you to go back. Why, why does the universe <coughs> need 
information? Why does it need to, to have this information? Why does a rock may, need some sort of informational precisely. image? Uh, what you call information, we as physicists would just write as terms in equations, right? We think of the physical world as being driven by mathematical formulas. In these formulas, there are what you call degrees of freedom. So things can be this, that, or that. Oxygen or hydrogen, you know, right. as an example. Uh, all these things which go in the equations. And we are used, in particular in quantum mechanics, to the situation that if two things start up differently, they end up differently. That's a fundamental notion in quantum theory. We can't get around that. You can't have two different states ending up after a while to be the same. That is that violates the principles of quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics itself is not such a sacred theory that maybe there are violations of it, but then we want to know about this. We just don't want to say, well, you know, we have to clear that mess up later. No, no, the mess has to be cleared up right now. If there's a flaw of this sort in our results, we want to know about it. So what Hawking was saying, two different black holes start out differently. In one of them, a teapot is falling, the other, the other an old shoe. I saw uh, this movie. <laughs> and if the teapot falls into a black hole or an old shoe falls into a black hole, that's different. A teapot's not the same thing as a shoe. And nevertheless, after a while, they look exactly the same, according to Hawking. I see. So it has to be a different said that's, that violates our equations. That I cannot be true. There's something wrong. Something went wrong on the way, and we want to know what it is. Thanks for referring to that, because I can't tell you how hard it was to get the teapot in the black hole and then to get the shoe. You know, I, I sometimes they say, just get, get the teapot. We said, well, you got to get the shoe, too, and that was sort of really hard. Herman, please. All right, okay. Let me first follow up on, on sort of the, because you were asking how was it to have this debate with Hawking. That was yeah. kind of your question. Uh, maybe I can tell a an, uh, little anecdote about how it was. In part, it was, of course, all about science, and we're all friends, even if we disagree about the science. But uh, Hawking uh, is a, is a, a very uh, special person where he, can think very deeply about questions, uh, but he also has a handicap. He cannot speak, uh, so he has to speak with this uh, by typing words. And then sometimes the debate would go like this, then indeed an argument would be given, and then Hawking's response would be one word, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> very hard to argue and with. And that's very yeah. hard to argue, argue with. Yeah, and you know, you know and, 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 when, and I, so when I say rubbish, <coughs> nobody pays any attention, you know? But when Hawking says yeah. rubbish, it's, yeah. it's silent, yeah. and you've it's lost capital, the argument at that point. Capital R, <laughs> yeah. It's a big font there. Yeah, right. When Hawking says it. All right, so, so Hawking says rubbish to you. Do, do you, like, go home and tell your wife, Hawking said rubbish to me, what do I do? <laughs> or do you, like, go to the blackboard, or you just sit down at the computer? What happens? You, you go on with, because you believe in your argument. The other question about information, the thing that I like sort of as a way of uh, inf uh, explaining what information is, we live right now in the, s in the age of information. This is the information age. And, um, but the type of information that we're talking about here, you say, well, it's more complicated. But one way of imagining what kind of information we're talking about is, I like, again, the, the movie The Matrix, uh, where, again, there's this virtual reality uh, where, and actually I had kind of nightmares myself uh, when I was young. Okay, well, what if the whole world is just an, uh, a thing that's being projected on my brain? Or actually for all of us, if we're sitting here in this room, and who knows, maybe it's just a computer that makes us believe that we're real. Uh, and uh, the kind of information that we're talking about is really sort of what, what is inside of this computer. J imagine you make the, 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 this hall here with all the reality of being able to do experiments, things fall, uh, you collide things, things happen exactly the way we th think about them as happening in physics, uh, but it's all just zeros and ones in a computer. And in principle, you can quantify how many terabytes, how many gigabytes, how many, I'm not sure, if I forgot what comes after, gigabytes, but there, uh, there's information in that computer, and that's the kind of information that we're talking about. So, so when you say information, you say that physicists believe and cosmologists believe that it is possible to map every aspect of reality that we are experiencing here into some sort of stored code that specifies precisely everything that's happening here, what people smell like, uh, who is mad at who, who, who's wearing like dirty shoes, and, uh, and, and, and what they're even thinking about. Right. 
uh, you can imagine that that's the way it goes. Uh, now, does, now, is that something scientists are imagining, or does quantum mechanics insist that that must be so, Raphael? Uh, quantum mechanics, 